Hey normies, my name is Tom. And the name of this lightning talk is how to put the git commit hash in your version string. So this is something you might want to know if you're packaging Python modules. I do this at my job on a data team where my coworkers and I found ourselves writing lots of code to do the same thing in different contexts. So doing the same data transformations, making the same plots and so on. Instead of copy pasting the same 300 lines of code from notebook to notebook, we'd pack it up and give it a cute name like normutil. There's a lot of good reasons to do this, but this talk isn't about those. Um, this talk is about after you've done that, when things inevitably break, how do I debug code if it's not right there in the notebook where I can read it and see what's going wrong? So for us, the key enabler has been to use version numbers that are as specific as possible. If I have that, I or the person helping me should be able to find the exact code that I'm running just by looking it up in the history. And by convention, Python packages set a version attribute with double underscores at the root of the module that you can check. But it's not automatic how it gets there. It's up to you to put it there when you're packaging the module, and the most basic way is to just make a string literal and manually bump up the version from time to time. So this is where we started. Whenever we merged a pull request, we'd have to remember to put the new version number there and anywhere else it might be needed, like setup script or annotated tag that GitHub wants you to use. Um, and if you've got to do this, you'd have two different editions of the code out there with the same version number, which defeats the purpose. So this is all pretty fiddly and generally not a good time. And one of the best things we ever did for ourselves was to put the git hash in the version number. And there's two tools that I'm aware of that can do this for Python, versioneer and setup tools SCM. The idea behind both of them is I already have the code in the git repository for each commit is uniquely identified by a hash value. So it'd be real good to have that information in the version string. I can still choose sequential version numbers manually. Both systems use git tags as a source of truth for those. But for commits without a tag, they add two pieces of disambiguating information. Number one, the number of commits that have been made since the tagged release. In this example, there's three commits beyond the tag. Number two, the first seven characters of the commit hash which should be enough to remove any ambiguity about which three commits those are. So the default format they use is slightly different. Version years is more concise. So in this example, it reads as three commits past version zero to zero. And setup tools SCM is more verbose. So it reads as three commits in development toward version zero to one. It guesses what it thinks you're gonna name the next version, not always correctly. If you don't like these behaviors, you can configure one of several other formats. So version year I think has eight to choose from and setup tools SCM has even more. So the bigger difference between these tools is how they integrate into your project. Versioneer has an install script that vendors a few thousand lines of code into your repo, which sounds terrible, but the installer is really smooth and the vendoring is what enables Versioneer to always compute the correct version at runtime. Setup tools SCM doesn't vendor itself in. Instead, it integrates at a build time dependency from PyPI. There's only about a dozen lines of code to set it up, but it took me a lot of trial and error just because there's so many different ways to do it, many of them equally valid. I ended up preferring the write to argument in the setup script and then importing my double underscore version string from the file that it makes. Both of these tools have some gotchas that didn't trip me up until I had already been using them for a while. I really like the concise version numbers that version near makes by default, but these started causing problems for us once we started uploading packages to a package index instead of just installing straight from GitHub. I learned that the part of the version string that's after the plus sign is called a local version identifier, and it's not intended to indicate that something is a development version of the package. Technically, you need the literal word dev, D-E-V, in the version name to indicate that to pip, and it needs to come before the plus sign. So if you use versioneer's default and upload packages to a local package index, pip might consider a version with a local identifier to be interchangeable with a version that doesn't have that suffix. So long story short, we tried pinning the non-development version of our packages and ended up getting a development version instead, which was one day at work. This is only a problem with versioneer's default format. There are more verbose options that don't have this problem. And if you aren't using a private package index, then it won't even matter to you. Setup tools SCM isn't without its faults either. So it really wants to be used as a build time dependency. And as Python programmers, we aren't really used to things having a build step. So 
the biggest drawback to doing things that way, in my opinion, is that the version string only updates when the setup script is run. So if you install your package in the editable mode, which we often do, the version string could be lying to you if the code changes in the repo, but isn't explicitly reinstalled. I think this is a pretty big limitation, but fortunately it's possible to work around it by coding up a runtime dependency on setup tools SCM. So real quick, here's the method I used to do that. It's not too interesting, but it was super necessary for the work that we, for the way that we work. It's worth emphasizing that you don't need this if you never run in the editable mode or if you're already used to running a build every time you change the code, then you don't need this. So those are the two sharpest edges of these two tools. I'm missing the rest on this slide. Um, I give the edge to setup tools SCM these days because it supports Python's newer TOML based static metadata format. Um, overall though, I think there are still great versions to use, great reasons to use version near if that's uh, easier to wrap your brain around. So thanks so much for watching. I'll post a repo where I demonstrate both of these installs up on GitHub at baldwint slash normutil. If you have questions or corrections about what I've communicated here, please reach out to me using one of these channels. Um, I love chatting about how to do mundane stuff well, and I'm so happy this conference exists and for the opportunity to uh, contribute this. So thanks for coming to my TED Talk. I hope this information is useful to someone.